reproductive biologist at the University of Adelaide, and she's, a, she's actually the 2020 Young Tall Poppy of the Year for South Australia. So we've got lots of tall poppies, but one is actually chosen head above the others, and Kylie ha um, has the honour of that selection. So one of the greatest challenges for IVF clinics is identifying which embryos are suitable for transfer back into the patient's womb. The current gold standard technology is taking a small number of cells from the embryo and then sequencing the DNA just to see if the embryo has predicted number of chromosomes. As well as being invasive, this procedure is inaccurate. Dr. Dunning has developing new technologies that overcomes the need for cell biopsy and instead uses light as a non-invasive molecular photo. This is a revolutionary procedure that involves shining gentle doses of light upon an embryo and then using the scattered light that comes back to reveal the intricacies of the biochemistry. Kylie. So, um, thanks. Being the 2020 tall poppy means I'm not so shiny. Being the mother of three small children means I'm pretty sleep deprived. <laughs> and unfortunately, the worm is not a good model for the human embryo, so I really feel like I'm missing out on the whole worm thing as well. So light is pretty amazing. Tonight I'm gonna to give you a taster of the kinds of things that light can do. From the cosmological to the medical, and finally I'll finish up on its potential uh, use in diagnosing embryo health to improve IVF success. Does anyone wanna have a stab at what that might be a picture of? Oh, you're gonna know, see you put your hand up so fast, go for it. LIGO! Anyway, to me it looks like perhaps a water pumping station or a, uh, some gas pipes. It's, yeah, it's actually, yeah, go, go. It, it's a gravitational wave and telescope. It is. It's what a telescope would look like. That's right, it actually uses the interference of light to prove the existence of gravitational waves in space. That is fantastic. Round of applause. <laughs> it, uh, and, and it won the Nobel Prize in 2017. Um, light is also used in the hospital. Anybody who's visited the hospital might have had this popped on the end of their finger. It's a pulse oximeter and it uses light. You can see the red light there. Light to measure the level of oxygen in your blood. Anyone who's had an eye test recently would have had one of these done. Uh, this, is, this is called an OCT scan, it's op stands for optical so appearance tomography, and it takes a three-dimensional picture at the back of your eye, so it can detect changes in your eye before um, disease really progresses. Fascinatingly, light can actually hold things in place. So this, these are nine red blood cells. So red blood cells are found in your blood, and you'll carry oxygen around, oxygen around your body. So these are isolated out of blood. And the next video I'll play, while you can't see the light, the tightly focused light, each of these uh, crosses is actually an, a laser that's holding the red blood cells in place. And just for fun, fun you can make them dance. <laughs> There's other things we can do with it, but uh, it's a really uh, useful instructional video on use on light to, to position and move cells. This is awesome, right? This is a video or a GIF, depending on your uh, age, of a molecular motor. So every cell in your body has molecular motors, so those two little feet moving, or hands, move um, hand over hand along a track. And these tracks are called track tubules, and they're found all throughout every one of your cells. And their job is to move cargo from one part of the cell to, the, uh, to others. And so this same technology used on the left has been able to take very, very small measurements of these molecular motors in cells. So they take very tiny, tiny they take, say, steps on the nanometer scale, so scales, a billionth of a meter. And we can also quantify how much cargo they can, how fast they travel and how much cargo they can um, carry. We're interested in using light, as Pallavi very uh, perfectly introduced, to measure the health of embryos. And we use a particular type of microscope called a hyperspectral microscope. And this type of imaging has been used in, in, in several other industries before it even got to biology. So there's a couple of examples up there on the left-hand corner. It's been used in food inability. Um, so the, the, the colourful picture on the very left um, is a hyperspectral image, image of some frozen chips. So they're going to make sure that your chips look all right before they pop them in the bag. 
And they've also been used to look at the integrity of eggshells and whether your kiwi fruit has any bruises. It's also used in art history. So it was used in this case here. This is an um, image of a Leonardo da Vinci's Virgin of the Rocks. And the hyperspectral image was used to reveal the drawing. The drawing actually exists, so his sketches that he used before the final picture you can see on top. But as I said, in our we're interested in using this to understand events that happened in the very in the first few, first few of life. So these are events that happen straight after fertilization. Uh, when the one cell embryo, which is in the top video there, the one cell embryo will divide um, into two cells, and then 24 hours later into four cells. And this embryo keeps continuing to divide until it gets to a stage where it starts to de develop a cavity at the center. And that um, is depicted in the schematic on the right-hand side as well. And it's this stage of embryo development that's called the blastocyst, that the embryo is able to be transferred back up back IVF and, and result in a pregnancy. Well, importantly to note about this embryo is that it, it's the first time in anyone's life that you go from having all cells that are exactly the same to two distinct different cell types. The inner cell mass that'll go on to form the baby and the rest of the cells that go on to form all form other tissues, including the placenta. I should go back. But in human embryos, things don't always go to plan. Every time one cell divides into two, we want the equal division of the chromosomes. So the chromosomes are doubled, all the DNA content is doubled, doubled. We want equal segregation into each of the daughter the cells, is what they're known as. And this is shown this year in this video. The chromosomes are in green, and then they're pulled apart equally into two separate cells. So you end up with so two cells with the same number of chromosomes. But in the next video, I'll show you when it doesn't go to plan. You'll see a green chromosome just lagging behind right in the middle. There it is right there. And it ends up in the bottom cell instead of the top cell. So what we have is a cell with too few and a cell with too many. And we think this is likely to result in, um, if embryos have too many of these cells with the, the unexpected number of chromosomes, there won't be a successful pregnancy. And as Pallavi kindly introduced, the current diagnostics don't really do a very good job at diagnosing uh, this in a human embryo. So we've been using hyperspectral imaging, as Pallavi said, and we can like, look at the light that's reflected back. So these are false colored images of a good embryo on the left and a poor quality embryo on the right. And we can use light non-invasively to say, the only bit of real science in my talk, is that we can definitively say on this plot, that embryo has the expected number of chromosomes and is euploid versus the embryos that don't have the expected number of chromosomes. And we're really hoping this is a promising tool to, to increase the number of patients taking home a healthy baby following IVF. Thank you.